Hello, it's Philip Taylor speaking from Richmond Green Chambers in London. Today I'm looking at a book which has come to us from Edward Elgar Publishing Limited, and the book is called Environmental Border Tax Adjustments and International Trade Law. It's got a subtitle, uh, Fostering Environmental Protection, and it's been written by Alice uh, Perlot. Um, it's part of the New Horizons in Environmental and Energy Law, published by Edward Elgar Publishing Limited, and it's available both uh, online and as a, a printed book. Elizabeth and I have given our uh, review title the following, a new legal phenomenon, uh, border tax adjustments implemented with the aim of environmental protection. And that's really what the book is um, all about. It's an important book. Let's have a look at the book first of all anyway. There it is. There's the spine and then there's the back of the book there. There's a lot of information which is available. If we open the book up, the index at the back is by page numbering. Um, there's quite a substantial index at the back, which you can see there. And then you've got the references at the back of the uh, book. There is actually in this uh, book a bibliography. So it's slightly differently arranged from some of the other Elgar books where each set of references and bibliography is at the end of each chapter. It's not done like the, that here because Alice has been the, the writer all the way through. And then there are various uh, conclusions at the end of the book. You can see there's, there's, para, uh, there's actual footnoting and uh, the use of uh, subheadings um, throughout. There's quite a lot of footnoting if you look at the book. We go to the front of the book. Um, <clears throat> this is the front uh, page there. And this is the um, series of publications from Elgar. They're an independent publishers and they publish uh, some very useful uh, information on... Um, very useful information on uh, international uh, trade law matters. And I'm sure you will find this book of, of, of great assistance. I'm just readjusting my, <coughs> my uh, outfit at the moment. There is the uh, blurb about the online system, and there is the contents section there. You can see it's split into various parts, three parts in total, and then you've got the a conclusion at the back, and then there's the bibliography. And there's a foreword, which is well worth reading. The foreword's been written by Professor um, Traversa, uh, and that's quite useful because it sets out clearly what this book is uh, aiming to achieve, and I think it achieves it very well indeed. Then there are acknowledgements, and then after that you've got a useful set of abbreviations, always of help in international trade, I have to say, because it's terribly difficult sometimes to remember some of the abbreviations. Then you've got the various case uh, authorities set out um, coming from different, uh, different areas and countries. Then there's an introduction to the book itself. Taxation is a powerful policy instrument. A pretty strong statement just to start off with, but you can see it, it actually is looking at a very important area which affects everybody. And as I say, you do have the footnoting and then you get into the various parts from there. And then, then as, as I say, you can see the numbering and the footnoting clearly. And as I say, the book runs to about 330 odd pages, something like that. Now, what do we say about the book? Well, we say the following. The title we give it, a new legal phenomenon, border tax adjustments implemented with the aim of environmental protection. That's basically what we think this book is, is aiming to cover and cover well and that's exactly what I think it does. Now Elizabeth and I discussed the book and this is this is what we basically felt about it having talked about the book and Elizabeth did the first draft of the review. We start off with a quote, the oldest taxes imposed on imported products are tariffs, writes Alice uh, Perlot in her lucid and informative treatise on BTAs, that's Board of Tax Adjustments, with a view to exploring the ways in which these legal instruments, implemented by policy decisions, may ultimately protect the environment. Now, Board of Tax Adjustments, BTAs, are thus described as a new legal phenomenon in the history of world economic development, 
and the culmination of a four-year research project is what this book is because it's basically an inquiry into the ways and means by which such taxes may be applied both generally and specifically to achieve beneficial environmental aims. It's been recently published by Elgar. Um, I'm reviewing this at the end of 2017 and the book's logical structure certainly facilitates study while it invites further inquiry. It's divided into three parts, each section focusing respectively first on traditional BTAs, secondly environmental BTAs. Perhaps unique or at least unusual and certainly enlightening that at least one third of the book examines the history and theoretical foundations of both. So I think if you are looking at this particular of BTAs, that will be of great beneficial value to you with your studies and your research. Reference is made, for example, to the influence of those prominent, and eco prominent economists of the 18th and 19th centuries. That's Adam Smith, David Ricardo and John Stuart Mill, who in the author's words introduced free trade theories to improve welfare among nations. Now, she remarks that although Ricardo's theory of comparative advantage is at the heart of BTAs, later discussions on these instruments have not always put sufficient emphasis on their historical development. And this book certainly does, thereby enlarging the perspective on this form of cross-border taxation. And I, I would venture to suggest that this is an important area for the future as we become much more global in the way we do our business. As a result, of course, all these issues make an important contribution to the literature on the subject, particularly as the UK embarks on an ever more complicated set of trade deals uh, pre and post Brexit, which is a year and a bit away from us as I record this. The focus of the book is actually on BTAs in respect of internationally traded goods, the aim being to determine the extent to which countries may use taxes to um, foster environmental goals at the international level. And of course, this has been one of the quite clear concerns of a lot of the people who supported Brexit about the level of interference in a member state with, with what a member state is doing, a national state is doing by other people. And I think that is going to be something that's of a long term nature and something that will have to be looked at again by a whole series of different larger countries um, as uh, Britain enters the post, uh, post sort of Brexit era. And obviously to this end and all these issues that we're talking about uh, are reviewed and the author presents an analysis of three core elements of what she calls environmental BTAs. It's their rationale, their tax design and their legal framework. Part three of the book is a discussion on the shifts um, further, for example, to general gap provisions and BTAs and overall compatibility of traditional and environmental BTAs under World Trade Organization law and beyond. So I do think it's, 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 it's actually an important book for all of us as we prepare in 2018 to leave our current relationship with the European Union and see some very, I think, some very big changes in, in international trade law. I'm sure that's bound to happen as a result of Britain's decision to withdraw. Now, let me conclude by saying, as Janet Milne of the Vermont Law School has observed, this book works artfully in the intersection of tax law, environmental law and trade law. It therefore merits the close attention of a broad readership uh, from international lawyers, tax specialists and environmental lawyers to policymakers in government and industry, <coughs> excuse me, not to mention um, e economists. And the research references the book contains are invaluable, especially those in the extensive footnoting, the table of cases and the 32 page bibliography, uh, which is at the back. And as I've said before, um, the house style is normally there for Elgar publications, but in this case, you've got a main bibliography at the back rather than at the end of each chapter. And the publication date is cited as at the 20th, uh, the 27th, sorry, of October 2017. Let's have a look at the book again. Nice cover at the front. There we go. There's the 
spine and then there's the back. There are some quotes by various people and there's a little bit of blurb about the book itself and about the author. Just opening it up in the middle. It's a hardback as you probably gather. You can see the structure. You've got some paragraph numbering. Uh, you've got plenty of footnoting and you've got a lot of detail. And I think it's a tribute to the scholarship of Alice Perlo that, that, uh, or Perlot that this has actually um, um, seen the light of day because it's a substantial work and a huge amount of effort's been put into it. So thank you to everybody who's been involved. Bye-bye.